All right, so we're looking at uh, rational functions again. Same stuff we've been doing. We're going to focus more on the graph uh, today or, or things about that graph. Uh, we, we've already found a lot of things about the graph. Uh, and those things we found were vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, oblique asymptotes, those, those things that we found. Uh, but there are some other things that happen inside of the graph that kind of happen with those things that, that we need to look into and uh, to get a more accurate picture of the graph. Okay, so the, the kind of the step by step that we're going to be going through today uh, is when we look at a rational function, you should do this to every rational function you're asked about anyway. We were already doing a lot of this stuff. The first thing that I would do would be factor everything. Factor everything. Before you even start doing anything, factor it all. Factor the numerator, factor the denominator. And then once you've done that, what are you going to do next? What? Don't simplify yet. Set what equal to the zero? Which factored form? Numerator or denominator? The bottom to find the domain. That's what we want to do. So out of that, you know, find the domain. The second thing you would do would be simplify. Reduce that to the lowest terms. Find the vertical asymptotes. And then here's the new thing that comes with this section that anytime we simplify and we get a factor that cancels out, what that does is it creates holes in the graph. Okay, those holes are like the empty circles in the in the graph that we can draw when we draw that graph. The kind of the drawback of the graphic calculators, it doesn't show you those holes, but if you were to know that exact spot, then it would it would show up if you trace that point. Okay, so those holes are created from the factors that cancel out. That that's where they come from, uh, and you know the, so those are the x values from the canceled factors. If nothing cancels out, no, no simplification happens, then you don't have a hole in the graph. This only happens if stuff cancels out. Okay. All right. So everything we were already doing, the only thing now is we've got to remember, oh, those things that canceled out, what are the X values that go with those? And we're going to actually find the Y values that go with that as well so that we know where that hole is at. We'll, we're going to look at examples of this and stuff. So third thing that you would want to do is find, uh, since we already got it in factored form, we want to find our intercepts, both X and Y. How do you find the x-intercepts? Yeah, set equal to zero. Set. Uh, technically, here's the, the nice part, is you don't even have to worry about the denominator for x-intercepts. It's only going to come from the, the numerator. Set numerator equal to zero. Technically, that's all you're doing. If you set the whole thing equal to zero, you're going to end up with that anyway. Uh, and then your y-intercept, how do you find that? Yeah, plug in 0 or x. Okay. And then we've already done vertical asymptotes, so let's go ahead and get our horizontal or oblique.
When's the only time there's an oblique asymptote? Yeah, the degree of the numerator is one more than the degree of the denominator. When is there a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero? Not when they're equal to each other. Not just one less, any less. If the numerator is got a smaller degree than the denominator, then it's a y equals zero horizontal asymptote. If they're equal, how do we find that horizontal asymptote? Yeah, A over B meaning the the, the ratio, the leading coefficients there. So that's that's when we have those horizontal and obliques. Do they, they ever occur together? No. So we all, all know, remember all that stuff. So all the stuff we've already done, we're just adding a few small pieces. Now the next thing we want to do uh, is um, find if the graph crosses the asymptotes. And then the last thing we would do would be we would we could sketch the graph based on that. I say sketch or calculator because well, you know, we want to graph it on a calculator. That's obviously going to give us a good idea of what it looks like. Uh, but we we also need to be able to transfer that to uh, to a piece of paper if we need to out of that. So really, nothing too major. All right. So let's look at some examples of this stuff and see if we can go through all of these things for for each problem. All right. So example A. Let's let's get a function. Just an easy rational function, 6x plus 9 over 3x minus 2. Okay. First thing I want to do is try to factor everything, right? So, does the numerator factor? Yeah, well, how does it factor? 3 comes out and gives us 2x plus 3. And then the bottom part doesn't factor. So we factored it completely all over, and, and we're looking to see what's happening there. The next thing that I want to talk about is what? Domain. Domain. Before I, you know, it, this one's not going to simplify anyway, but before I even think about simplifying, get your domain. What's the domain? Yeah, x does not equal 2 over 3. Set notation, x does not equal two-thirds. Interval, negative infinity, two-thirds, union, two-thirds to infinity. Okay, so there's our domain. Right. Now let's simplify if we can. Nothing simplifies. It doesn't cross out or anything, so we're stuck there. Uh, so, vertical asymptotes. Well, x equals two-thirds. That'd be one of them, or the only one, actually. Is there no nothing canceled out, so we didn't lose the vertical asymptote on that. Um, kind of other asymptotes is this going to have since we're all we're kind of there? What what horizontal one? Yeah, because the degrees are the same, right? So A over B, yeah, be Y equals 2. Now that 6 over 3, leading coefficient there. Uh, so Y equals 2. Okay, so don't throw away your unfactored form because, you know, it can help you get your, your correct uh, leading coefficients uh, or, you know, so that you can get that horizontal asymptote. So that means that we have an oblique or not. No, can't have an oblique if we have a horizontal. All right. So let's get our intercepts. We'll go ahead and get that. 
Do what now? That's our horizontal asymptote. That's not an intercept. We're looking for intercepts as in X intercepts and Y intercepts. If we're going to find X intercepts, we take the you know, 6x plus 9 and equal to 0. And x would equal uh, 3 over, negative 3 over 2. So we have an intercept at negative 3 halves, 0. And our y-intercept would be plug in, you know, find f of 0. 6 times 0 plus 9 over times zero minus two and I'm using the unfactored form here you could use the factored form if something cancels out I'm going to use the, the the simplified version to do these if something simplifies we're going to see an example where that happens in just a second but um, so it'd be not negative nine over two f of zero so that's an intercept at zero negative nine over two that's our y intercept for that one and yeah. Now, uh, we also need to decide uh, if that crosses the asymptote. So, how do you decide that? Uh, vertical asymptotes, it's not going to cross those. It doesn't happen. Horizontals and obliques, it could. Okay, We have to decide if that's true or not. Okay, So, what we need to do to decide, does the graph cross y equals 2. Well, if y is equal to 2, if that's our asymptote, we can set the whole equation equal to 2 and see what the y, the x value is for that. So this is where we got to remember how to solve these things. Let's go back to the beginning of chapter 5. Uh, so how do I solve that? Yeah, I, I could go algebra 1 on it and cross multiply. 6x plus 9 is equal to 6x minus 4. And then here's what I'm going to see happening. The x's cancel out, and I get 9 equals negative 4. Is that true or false? So it doesn't cross. Yeah, anytime we get no solution there, it's not going to cross it. If we got an x, you know, x equals a certain number, we know it crosses at that point out of that. So, you know, it's just simply solving some stuff to get that to happen. So, does it cross? The answer to that is no. And then we could draw the graph of that. The uh, you know, idea here is, you know, I'm going to go to Y equals. I'm going to graph it on the calculator. So, parentheses, 6x plus 9 over, and then if, if you had simplified uh, anything, you you're welcome, you could graph the simplified version. And let me graph. And we can see that, you know, here's that horizontal asymptote at 2, here's that vertical asymptote at uh, 3 over 2, was that right? And uh, I type that in right? Yeah. And, and we can see all those things happening for us. Not anything just incredibly. So, like, if you were asked, if I asked you to graph this and draw that, I would want you to draw the, the curves that it's showing, but then also sketch in those hor that horizontal asymptote as, like, a dotted line, and then the vertical asym asymptote as a dotted line. Uh, and if there are holes in the graph, show me an open circle on that or something. We're going to see that in just a second. So sketching the graph is really just kind of copying what's going on there and, and then putting in your horizontal and vertical asymptotes out of that. I'm not going to be just incredibly picky about that. Those important points are if it crosses an asymptote, where's that happening at? If there are holes in the graph, where's that happening at? Where's our X and Y intercepts? Where are those happening at? Where are... Uh, our asymptotes and drawing those things in there. The rest of the graph, you get the general shape of it is what I'm after there as far as sketching the graph goes. Uh, 
Okay. Let's look at another one. Maybe one a little bit more, uh, a little bit more involved. Maybe I don't know. It turns out to be pretty simple, but here's our function: g of x is equal to x squared plus x minus thirty over x plus six. And so, what's it look like in factored form? Well, the bottom part doesn't factor at all, but what about the top part? X plus 6 and X minus 5. Yeah, it will eventually, but before I cancel it out, what do I have to do? Domain first. Don't simplify until you've done your domain. We know X can't be negative 6. Hopefully you're getting pretty averse at that. You can do that without a whole lot of difficulty. There's our domain. Uh, simplified form, since this one's simplified, would be g of x is equal to just x minus 5, right? So what's this one going to look like when you graph it? Just a line, yeah. It doesn't look like a, a rational function of you know once you've got the simplified version of that. Uh, but we still need to look at all those things that, that come with a because it came from a rational function. So we do need to look at those things. So uh, the next thing we'll look at is maybe a vertical asymptote. Is there a vertical asymptote here? No, because the, the piece that would have created one got canceled out, right? So no vertical asymptote. What about uh, horizontal or oblique? Well, what about the simplified version? Is the simplified version got anything to create an oblique? Mm -mm. So no horizontal or oblique. Remember, you know, our simplified version here is a straight line, so it, it's it's not likely to have asymptotes out of that just because of the way it's simplified there. Uh, let's find our intercepts. X intercepts, you know, X minus five equals zero, X equals five. So our X intercepts at five, zero. Where's our Y intercept? Yeah, we do. Zero, negative five. That's in slope intercept form, so that's, that's my Y intercept. Now, here's where we get into the, the newer things. Is there a hole in the graph? Yes, why? Because we had a factor that canceled out. So this is what makes this important that we go through all the steps of a rational function because it came from a rational function. And we know that there's a hole at x equals something. Well, we take that factor that canceled out, set it equal to zero. X equals six. Or negative six, sorry. Negative sign on that. Well, where's the y value that there should be a hole at? Well, just find g of negative six. Negative 11. or the ordered pair, negative 6, negative 11. Okay. So when, you, when we look at the graph of this, what we've got to keep in mind is that, that when we draw that, if we were asked to sketch this on a coordinate plane, we need to go to this point and put a hole there, put an empty circle there. Anytime we find a hole in the graph, that's what we need to note that on our graph. Okay. We know what the graph of y equals uh, x minus 5 looks like. Since it came from a rational function, we add the whole in there at negative 6, negative 11. Just an empty circle. And the rest of the line is the same. Okay. 
We don't have any asymptotes to check to see if it crossed them, so we don't have to check that uh, on this one. Uh, but the, we need to think about those things as we go through this. Let's look at yet another one that maybe incorporates most of this all at once. Example C, f of x is equal to 3x squared minus 3x over, let's do x squared plus x That's supposed to be an, a 9x right there, sorry. Minus 12. Sorry, miscopied my problem. 3x squared minus 9x over x squared plus x minus 12. Let's factor everything. Numerator. 3x yeah. Denominator. Yeah, plus 4, minus 3. You see some nice things happening already. Domain. Let's get that before we simplify. What do we know x cannot be? Yeah. Negative 4 and 3. So, interval notation for that. Negative infinity to the negative 4, union, negative 4 to 3, union, 3 to infinity. That should be just second nature now to convert back and forth, you guys, picking that up. Uh, simplified version. Okay. F of x is 3x over x plus 4. Now, let's get our asymptotes out of that. So, vertical. Asymptote or asymptotes? What's our vertical asymptote? X equals negative 4. Uh, does it have a horizontal or oblique? Horizontal, right? Because the degrees are the same. You know, in the unfactored version, the degrees are the same. In the simplified version, the degrees are the same. What's the uh, what's the y equals what? Three. Three over one. Leading coefficient at the top is three. Leading coefficient at the bottom is one. Three over one. So horizontal. And y equals 3. Okay. So we know we don't have an oblique if the horizontal exists. All right. Now, the question is, does you know, we can go ahead and answer that question. Does it cross, does the graph cross that? How do we decide that? Set the the simplified version, set it equal to 3. We're going to see Does 0 equal 12. Why would it be 90? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not multiplying 3x times 3, I'm multiplying x plus 4 times 3. Bottom times top. Not, not straight across. And so 3x equals 3x plus 12, and then 0 equals 12. But it's not true. So does it cross it? Okay, so does not cross. Okay. And then what else do we have to find? Intercepts. That's the important part. That's something we've been doing already. So. 3x equals 0, x equals 0. So we've got an x-intercept at 0, 0. Uh, y-intercept, it's the same spot, isn't it? So if I plug in a 0 into 3x 
you know, three x over x plus four, I end up with zero over four, which is still the same. So, so that's the only intercept I have. It's a, technically an x and a y intercept at the same time. Uh, out of that, so we'll show that. That'd be zero. So it's the same intercept out of that. And what else is there? Anything else other than the graph? Obviously. Check for a hole. We uh, where's the hole at? Hole at x equals three, right? And plug in. So find f of three. Three plus four. That'd be nine over seven. Three nine over seven. So we know when we graph that, we need to go to that point. You know, I'd make that, you know, if I'm drawing it, you know, I'm thinking what's 9 over 7 as a decimal, it's 1 point 2-ish. So I'd put a hole there at 3, positive 1.2. Okay. Always going to be looking for those things. All right. Take a little bit of practice on this stuff, but it's not too bad. I mean, you're just going through those steps, go through those things that we listed there at the front. If we go through that list uh, with each problem, you're going to be good. A lot of this stuff is stuff you've already done, so it's not anything incredibly, you know, adventurous. Uh, and we're actually done for the day, believe it or not.